بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I'm sharing with you today a very sad news that one of the great scholars of the Muslim Ummah of the Islamic world Shaykh Mufti Muhammad Rafi' Uthmani رحمه الله تعالى may Allah have mercy on him passed away yesterday on 18th of November at the age of 86 years this is a great scholar who lived in Karachi Pakistan who is from Karachi Pakistan and uh, one of the greatest scholars of this ummah you know the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take away knowledge by just snatching and seizing away the knowledge in Allah rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes and takes away knowledge from the ummah by taking away scholars ulama and scholars there are scholars and then there are scholars you know there are ulama but then there are real major ulama and this particular personality was from the elite scholars of the ummah in a time where we, many of the great scholars have left us from across the world, from the Arab world, from the subcontinent, from Africa, from different parts of the world. In the last three, four years, just from when the COVID time started, so many great scholars, I can think of so many who have passed away. Um, in the Arab world, people like Sheikh Wahab Zuhaili, rahimahullah, passed away. Um, uh, Sheikh Abdul Sattar Abu Ghudda passed away. Uh, just so many, so many scholars in Morocco. There was a very famous scholar who passed away, rahimahullah ta'ala, as well. Um, Sheikh Dr. Yusuf Qaradawi recently passed away. So one after the other, just so many. From in Turkey, we have Sheikh Mahmoud Afendi, uh, who passed away, rahimahullah. So in the last three, four years, so many great scholars have passed away. So from that level of scholarship, we have <clears throat> Sheikh Mufti Muhammad Rafi' Uthmani. Um, for those of you who may not be well acquainted, you may have heard of the term Uthmani or the name Uthmani. Uh, and there are two scholars. One is Mufti Muhammad Taqi Uthmani and the other is Sheikh Mufti Muhammad Rafi' Uthmani. These are two brothers, great brothers, known as the two sheikhs in Karachi and Pakistan. People call them as Sheikhain. Uh, so this uh, Mufti Rafi Uthmani is my teacher, a dear teacher, and it, it has been a very sad time since yesterday, um, since we found out about his passing away. Uh, Rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. Uh, and this is a loss not just for uh, for his family or for his madrasa, his institution in Karachi, Pakistan, or for Pakistan as a country, but it's a loss for the entire Muslim Ummah, entire world, because he was somebody whose influence and whose knowledge and wisdom reached out to all different globes of the world. So he's from this family, Uthmani family, and this is a very blessed family. Uthmani family is a unique family. Previously, we had scholars like Sheikh Zafar Ahmad Uthmani and Sheikh Shabbir Ahmad Uthmani, Rahimahum Allah Ta'ala. These were great scholars who uh, passed away who resided in originally from India, but then they moved to Pakistan after uh, migrated to Pakistan after the creation of Pakistan, uh, and their nasab and lineage goes back to Sayyidina Uthman radiAllahu taala anhu. But this great scholar, Mufti Rafi Uthmani, he is the son of Mufti Muhammad Shafi rahimahullah. His father was the Grand Mufti of Pakistan, the author of the famous Ma'arif al-Quran, which is the tafsir of the Quran, which he wrote in uh, Urdu in about eight volumes, and then it was translated into English, and also some other languages, multiple languages has been translated. A great scholar of this ummah, who passed away in 1976, Mufti Muhammad Shafi' rahimahullah, author of numerous books, a grand faqih, mufti, jurist, and actually Mufti Shafi' rahimahullah, his father was also a great scholar, Sheikh Mawlana Muhammad Yasin. He was also a great scholar uh, and he was actually a class fellow of Hakim al-Umma Mawlana Ashraf Ali Tanwi rahimahullah, friends. This is the father of Mufti Shafi rahimahullah. And Mufti Shafi rahimahullah, the grand um, Mufti of Pakistan, a great scholar. He used to actually be the a teacher in Dar al-Ulum, Durban Seminary uh, in India. 
uh, and he was a grand mufti of Darul Ulum Deoband for many years, Mufti Muhammad Shafi, rahimahullah. And then after the creation of Pakistan, he migrated and he moved to Karachi, Pakistan, relocated to Pakistan. And actually, he's one of, he was one of the main people who struggled and strived in order for Pakistan to be established, Mufti Shafi, rahimahullah, the father. And this person who, who's passed away is the son of Mufti Muhammad Shafi, rahimahullah, and his Brother is one of my other very dear and beloved teacher, Shaykh al Islam Mufti Muhammad Taqi Uthmani. Hafizahullah Ta'ala, may Allah grant him well being and uh, grant him patience at this time. I mean, he has been very much affected by this um, incident. But these were two, these are two great brothers, Mufti Rafi Uthmani and Mufti Taqi Uthmani. They have other siblings as well. Um, there's another one who is called uh, another brother who is, whose name is Maulana Muhammad Wali Razi, uh, Hafizahullah, who's still alive. He, he, uh, he is actually an author of a book in Urdu on Seer of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for which he received a prize um, because he wrote a book on Seerah using all those letters of the Urdu language which don't have dots in it. It's called Hadi Alam. I actually met him in Ramadan. Actually, Sheikh Mufti Taqlu Uthmani Hafidahullah introduced me to him. They were both walking and then I, I, I went to meet and I said, I've not met him before or I've seen him, but I've not had an introduction. So Mufti Dr. Uthmani introduced me and said, this is, you know, such and such person. And, you know, alhamdulillah, this was his brother that um, I got to meet, Maulana Wali, Muhammad Wali Razi. But Mufti Muhammad Rafi Uthmani is the elder brother of Mufti Taqli Uthmani uh, from this great family, the Uthmani family. He was born uh, in Dilbind in India. Because this family, their ancestors are from Dilbind. They hailed from Dilbind. And Mufti Muhammad Rafi Uthmani, who passed away yesterday, rahimahullah, he actually says, uh, and he's mentioned this on a few occasions, that my initial steady life started in the Darul Ifta of Darul Ulum Dilbind. There's actually a clip on, on YouTube as well where he's talking about this, that I started the Qaida Baghdadiyya, like Alif Ba Ta Ta. I started reading this in the Darul Ifta because he was accompanying his father to the Darul Ifta because his father was a grand mufti, senior mufti of the Darul Ulum Dilbind in India. Uh, and so he used to accompany his father and then when his father used to be writing fatawa, etc., working and, in, and engaged in research, etc. Mufti Rafi Uthmani said, I started, maybe he was two, three years of age and started his Alif Ba Ta Tha and, you know, his Qaida and, and basic uh, reading of Arabic language. Uh, and then he memorized the Quran there he had memorized half of the Qur'an, around 15 ajza of the Qur'an, and then his father migrated because Darulum, uh, sorry, uh, Pakistan was created in around 1947. So just after that, I think the first May after that, he migrated uh, the following year. And he, he struggled in the creation. And this family has a very strong link to the creation of Pakistan. Uh, Mufti Shafi rahimahullah, and then also his cousin Shabir Ahmad, Sheikh Allama Shabir Ahmad Uthmani, Sheikh Zafar Ahmad Uthmani, all the, these great personalities, they were the main instigators and the main people who actually created Pakistan. And Mufti Rafi Uthmani, who passed away, was a young boy when Pakistan was being established and created. He actually says this that, uh, you know, we were young because he was. He was born in 19, around 1936 or 37. I've read 1936. So he passed away at the age of 86. So 1936 and Pakistan was made and established and created in 1947. So he was nine years of age. And, you know, he said just before that as well, we used to campaign and we used to make our own youth groups that, OK, we need a country. We want Pakistan. And, you know, really striving as, as young children as well and the youth in order to establish Pakistan. So anyway, he was a great, great person. And 86 years of amazing life. Um, it's very difficult to talk about him in a short video uh, on, you know, or a short clip. But he was somebody who's, who was, you know, he, his personality was so unique, so comprehensive. He had services that he conducted in many different aspects uh, of life and his teachings you know they uh, are very comprehensive his works in very in many different fields um, from tafsir of the quran he's, he's taught the tafsir of the quran but one of his very uh, like 
as I said, he moved to Darul, uh, to Pakistan, and then his father established the Darul Karachi, and he started teaching in Darul Karachi. Uh, he's well, he studied there. He graduated from there. He stayed under the uh, uh, tutelage of his father. He studied by his father and some other shiuch, his teachers. Many of them include people like Sheikh Mufti Rashid Ahmed Ludiani, Sheikh Sahban Mahmoud Rahimahullah, Mufti Wali Hassan Tonki, who was a great, great Mufti, who was a Grand Mufti of Pakistan before, uh, you know, uh, after his father and before him because, you know, people gave Mufti Rafi Uthmani the title Mufti A'zam, the Grand Mufti, after the passing of Sheikh Mufti Wali Hassan, rahimahullah. So th this, that was his teacher. So many great teachers. And also from the Arab world, he had ijazah in hadith from Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Mashat al-Maliki, Sheikh Yasin al-Fadani, rahimahullah. And there was one Sheikh Ahmed Nakhibi, rahimahullah, who passed away, he li living and residing in Jeddah at the age of 120. A great scholar. Um, Sheikh Ahmed Nakhibi living in Jeddah. I think he had uh, Yemeni uh, ancestors or, uh, or roots, um, but he had one of the highest asanid of hadith. And when Mufti Taqi Uthmani and Rafi Uthmani, both brothers, when they visited him, Sheikh Ahmed Nakhibi, he actually passed away, I don't know, about 10 or 15 years ago. I can't remember exactly when, um, 2007, 8 or something like that, around the age of 110 or 20. I'm not exactly sure. You could check this up. But he, when they, when, when these two brothers, uh, Taqi and uh, Rafi Uthmani, the two sheikhs, they, when they visited him and requested him that we want ijazah of hadith, like your chain of transmission, he said, I want yours as well. So then he said, look, I will not grant you permission until you don't grant me permission. So what they did was they did tadbij. This is called tadbij, when you exchange. You give me my scarf, I give you your scarf. Like you give me a gift, I give you a gift, we exchange. So this is called Mudabbaj Tadbij, and they did Tadbij. Uh, and so they gave, granted him ijazah, both brothers, and he granted the, the two brothers ijazah in hadith. And then I actually read this somewhere. I was reading on, on online once, and I read this, that uh, when he passed away, Sheikh Ahmed Nakhibi, the one in Jeddah, the great scholar of hadith who had one of the highest chains of transmission, when he passed away, um, because what he said, to these two brothers, that when you go back, send me all your chains, asanid, written format, uh, and you know, send it to me, your asanid. So they wrote a letter and they sent him. So I read this online, that um, the last day before he passed away, the last letter that was read to Sheikh Ahmed Nakhbi was the letter sent by Sheikh Taqi Uthmani and Sheikh Rafi Uthmani. In there was the Asanid and everything. And that was the last, after Asr, um, his granddaughter, I think Sheikh Ahmed Nakhbi's granddaughter or somebody read out the letter of Sheikh Taqi and Sheikh Rafi Uthmani. And after that, he passed away. That was the last letter. Just moments after that, a, year, a month or so after, sorry, an hour or so after that, he passed away. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And I actually mentioned this very incident to Mufti Taqithmani about three, four years ago. And he was quite astonished. I said, yeah. And he said, send it to me. And I actually sent it to him. And then they actually put that in his uh, Mufti Taqi Uthmani, uh, his Thabat, which is called his compilation of uh, his Asanid, which have been gathered, uh, Thabat al-Uthmani. In there, this has been mentioned as well. So anyway, uh, Mufti Muhammad Rafi Uthmani had many great teachers, but his main person, that he took a lot of knowledge from, and not just knowledge, knowledge, piety, wisdom, hikmah, basira, understanding, all the various qualities was his father. I mean, his father is was a gem, like, you know, he is the source and the root of all of this, Mufti Muhammad Shafi, rahimahullah. Uh, and he studied by his father, he graduated by his father, and then he also had a sheikh, a sheikh of tasawwuf, who also had a lot of influence on his makeup. Sheikh Dr. Abdul Hay Arifi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who passed away in 1986. His father passed away in 1976. Sheikh Dr. Abdul Hay Arifi, Rahimahullah, passed away in 1986. Um, and these both, his father and his Sheikh of Tasawwuf, both of them are students of Hakim al -Umma, the great scholar of the subcontinent, the you know, Hakim, the wise man of the Ummah, Sheikh Mawlana Ashraf Ali Tanabi, Rahimahullah. So it all really comes from there, basically. And then if you carry on going, it all comes back and goes back all the way to the companions. And it comes from the Messenger, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, of course. So uh, he graduated from there and then he studied the ifta, takhassus, specialization, fiqh. And then he started teaching there. And, you know, he was teaching at the Dar Ulum uh, in, in uh, Dar Ulum Karachi, which is a massive institute in Pakistan. 
uh, and he started with the earlier books and the earlier years and then he carried on and progressing and then he taught hadith and he has been a very successful hadith teacher the muhaddith a great hadith teacher where he taught in Darul Karachi for the past 45 to between 45 to 50 years I, I, I'm not sure exactly how many but around over 40 years without a shadow of doubt he taught Sahih Muslim the second most authentic book uh, uh, you know after Sahih al-Bukhari Sahih of Imam Muslim he, he lectured on that and uh, and then not just that he was uh, he lectured on that uh, he he so he is a great he has you know his elite level of hadith knowledge also a grand mufti like i mentioned the ulama gave him the title of grand mufti mufti a'zam because he was a great jurist and as i will mention his books i mean he he wrote thousands of fatawa hundreds and you know thousands of fatawa under the tutelage and guardianship and uh, supervision of his father and then later as well and then he not just wrote them, but he did, he did tasdeeq of them, like he approved. So over his life, there's thousands of fatawa that have been issued, uh, written directly by him or approved by him. Uh, and he's also a sheikh of tasawwuf, like he had a lot of tarbiyah done by his sheikh, and he had a lot of murids in tasawwuf, and he would make tarbiyah. Uh, people had ijazah from him in tasawwuf as well. A great, great scholar of tasawwuf as well. Also a great da'i, a great lecturer, you know, his talks used to be very balanced, very full of hikmah, wisdom, very calm personality, very tranquil, you know, always very thoughtful, very reflect reflective, uh, very organized. His brother mentions this as well, very organized, very principled. Um, he had uh, organizational skills, amazing organizational skills and he was very pious as well you should you should always you would see him always engaged in the remembrance of allah dhikr of allah like you know i remember i used to always every time he just says mashallah 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 alhamdulillah alhamdulillah mashallah if you see some of his clips on youtube so you talk to him you'll say something to him you say mashallah mashallah with a smile on his face amazing amazing uh, you know subhanallah amazing person and one of his great one of his great if not the greatest sort of um, ac accomplishments, is how he put his life and soul in the great Darul Ulum Karachi Seminary. Darul Ulum Karachi Seminary is massive. If, if you haven't seen it, it's difficult. I had a friend from the UK who recently visited and he saw Darul Ulum Karachi and he said, you know, I've been hearing about it, but once you go there and you see with your eyes, you realize. And he actually said to me, after Haramain, Mecca, Medina and Palestine, Baytul Maqdis, he's been many countries, this friend of mine, a scholar in the north of UK, he's been to many countries, traveled to many countries. He does charitable work. But he said to me that after seeing the Haramain and Masjid Al-Aqsa, this is the fourth place on planet Earth I, I felt most overwhelmed by. He was there for one day. Uh, so if you've seen it, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, then honestly, at least check some YouTube videos and documentaries out. I actually, you know, Dalim Karachi, alhamdulillah, I studied there in, in 1988 to 1999. But I visited recently two times. But in 2020, December, I visited. And I wrote a whole book afterwards, a travel log, log called Two Weeks in Pakistan. Inshallah, in the link, we'll put, the, we'll put a link uh, in the comment section. Uh, where you can download the book for free and also there's a physical copy which you can order as well. So two weeks in Pakistan and I've got some pictures in there. Uh, he became the principal or the president because down there they have the thing president. And he's known in Darul Ulum Karachi as Sadr Sahib. Sadr Sahib. Sadr Sahib means Mr. President. Um, that's how students know him. Sadr Sahib or, uh, or uh, Raisul Jami'ah. Raisul Jami'ah or Sadr Sahib the head of the Jamia, head of the university. Um, I've written here in the book, over the last few decades, he has overseen the growth and transformation of that Dar Ulum into a world-renowned Islamic university. And he is the longest serving president of the Dar Ulum. He took office in 1986, when his Sheikh, Dr. Abdul Hayy Arifi passed away, because after his father, they gave the, you know, the presidency of the Dar Ulum to uh, his Sheikh, Dr. Abdul Hayy Arifi. And from 1986 to today, we are in 2022. That is 36 years. He uh, gave his life and soul. Uh, and in the words of his younger brother, 
He dedicated his life and the words of his younger brother Mufti Taqr Uthmani This is from his autobiography, Mufti Taqr Uthmani's autobiography Every nook and cranny of Dar Alum bears witness to the exhaustive physical and mental energies my brother Mufti Rafi Uthmani devoted to the construction and progress of Dar Alum It would probably not be an exaggeration if I were to say that each and every building of Dar Alum except one or two was built under his direct supervision and he personally put in effort for every for each brick that was used. If you see, he had very high level organizational skills. He was very principled, even you know the way he dressed as well. Very, very, very organized, very neat, very tidy, very clean, his house, his office. Everyone knows this about him. So even Dar Ulum, his organizational skills at the Dar Ulum Karachi Seminary. Um, uh, and you know he was he was very particular about everything about and he had a lot of love for the students the students loved him as well uh, you know generally or you know whoever studied there and he was always very concerned about students about their welfare about their living about their food about their accommodation everything mashallah it's just a unique personality uh, so that's his you know probably one of his greatest achievements his you know, dedication to Dar al Karachi and how he transformed Dar al Karachi in Pakistan to what it is today. But along that, along with that, he's also a great scholar. His scholarship is there as well. But maybe he could not be able to, he was not able to dedicate as much time to scholarship like his brother did because of his organizational duties and his responsibilities of managing and supervising and looking after and taking care of the Dar Alum. But despite that, he taught hadith, like I said, for a good 45 years. And uh, he was a faqih jurist and he was author of books. We have his, his lectures on Sahih Muslim were published in two volumes, Dars Sahih Muslim. And uh, he has also other books that I've mentioned that he has written as well. Um, he has, you know, there, there's a book, uh, two volume, Nawadur al-Fiqh. I mean, I have some of his books here. This is Nawadir al-Fiqh. It's in two volumes, which are his fiqh articles. In Urdu, uh, a collection of his fiqh articles in two volumes. It's called Nawadir al-Fiqh. Um, and then, this is an Arabic book, Al-Maqalat al fiqhiyah This is actually, in Arabic, his fiqh articles, which uh, some of them were translated from Urdu and some he wrote in Arabic himself. Al-Maqalat al fiqhiyah and there's one book that a lot of the students of the madrasas know of the book, but they don't know about Mufti Rafi Uthmani, rahimahullah ta'ala, his connection to it. There's a famous book in Sarf, in Arabic language, grammar, morphology, uh, in Ilmu Sarf, called Ilmu Sigha. This used to be taught uh, and probably is still taught in many Dar Alums and seminaries. Uh, I remember when we were studying at Dar Alum Bari, it was taught Ilmu Sigha. Um, this was written actually in Persian by another scholar, Mufti Muhammad Rafi Uthmani, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he started teaching as a young teacher, the first, second years in Dar Ulum Karachi, and, and when he was teaching grammar and nahwa and sarf, he actually translated this from Persian to uh, Urdu, and he added his footnotes and some more like tahqiq and research, etc., under the supervision of his father. And his father actually wrote a forward, and this book is you know, available, you know, it's called Ilmu Sigha. Um, Sigha is like the wording, you know, of morphology, sarf, etc. And, and, you know, a lot of people don't know that Mufti Rafi Uthmani was behind this book. And he, his translation was the main reason that this book came into, you know, circulation and into Dar Ulums, where people started reading this book in Urdu. Um, and then he has some other books. These are like his is, Islahi Taqreer. These are his, uh, some books, which, uh, a book on... Just advice and guidance on tarbiyah and islah, you know, just general uh, talks and lectures for the reformation uh, and for, uh, of Muslims. He wrote a biography of his, of his father called Hayat Mufti Adam, the life of the Grand Mufti, which is his father, Mufti Shafi, rahimahullah. Another book collection of his lectures, Khutbat Uthmani, Lectures of Uthmani. He's written a travel log here, Ambiyaki Sarzameen Me. This was his journey to Jordan and Syria. And when he came back, he wrote, and some of the people, I remember when he actually f called me, I remember when he, when he was going to Jordan, because I studied in Syria, so uh, he actually called me on my phone, I remember that time, and said, look, um, you've been to Syria, 
how is it and do you know any uh, numbers down there or any people I, actually now i just remember that he actually called me on my phone on my mobile phone that time it was uh, mid 2000 2003 or 4 something like some, something like that uh, and then alhamdulillah he went to syria he went to jordan and then some of my friends there people like sheikh faraz rubani and others they actually you know took him and stayed with him for 2 3 days in jordan and he really loved it i mean they they when they met him they were all astonished by by his uh, so he actually wrote a whole you know, travel log on his visit to Anbiya Kisar Zameen means the, the land of the prophets. So, and then this is another travel log of, you know, um, of Pakistan, of Gilgit, Kipaharumi or something. This is a really important book, an amazing book. Dabitul Mufattirat Fi Majali Tadawi. This is all about uh, the principles of how a fast is invalidated. It talks about injections and all these things he mentions very principled in light of the four madhabs and then he talks about all the modern issues as well injections and ear drops and eye drops and smear tests and all sorts of things and uh, there's a brother in actually in denmark who summarized this into english and it's actually been used by everybody it's an amazing book uh, and he's also his fatawa uh, i don't have them but we'll put a picture on his fatawa like i said his fatawas his verdicts which he's written over the years thousands and thousands They've recently been started being collected and four volumes or a few volumes um, have been uh, published and more, more are to be published, uh, which are called Fatawa Darulum Karachi Imdadus Sa'ilin. So, alhamdulillah, he has books as well. He's a very scholarly person as well, but uh, because of his like dedication to the supervision and, and uh, the running of the Darulum Karachi, he probably was not able to. Uh, dedicate his as much time and one last thing I would like to say is one of his greatest qualities like his piety his knowledge everything is there is his i'tidal i'tidal means his balance and not just him the point here is that you know this is the hallmark i'tidal which is balance which is the middle way which is um, you know very uh Sorry, being moderate, not being extreme to the right, not to the extreme to the left, not foregoing your own principles and not, you know, uh, leaving what you believe in and, you know, thinking everyone's right. On the other hand, not being so aggressive and harsh that the whole world starts hating you and the only thing you can do is just argue and fight all the time. He, he was very balanced. And this is the hallmark, not just of him, but this is the hallmark of Darul Ulum Karachi. The Islamic University Seminary in Pakistan, Dar al Karachi. This is the hallmark. This was the way of his father. This was the way. Of, this is the way of his brother Mufti Taqi Uthmani and many others. And honestly, I would like to say that anyone who studied at Dar al Karachi and graduated from there or studied for a considerable amount of time will come out with this quality of balance, of i'tidal, of wasatiya, of of very calm, being calm. It's natural. All these great, I mean, this, he's left behind thousands of students across the world. In the UK, there's thousands of students in the Western world, all over Pakistan. In Darul Karachi, people study there. Students come to study from, there from all around the globe, not just Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkey, um, just different parts of the world. And then the Western countries as well, America, Canada, UK, um, South Africa, many other parts of the world. So thousands of students, but who, whoever studied there, honestly, you get this i'tidal. Uh, and you know, I remember he has. You know, he always used to say, always in Urdu, "Apna maslak choromat, dusro ka choromat." All the time, don't leave. Ch in in Urdu, there's two similar words like choro chero. So, uh, don't leave your maslak, your mash like your position, what you follow, but don't tease and don't start attacking other people. He used to always say this. This was his very famous. Uh, two lines so this i'tidal um, a very balanced understanding and that's why he tried a lot for unity you know in Pakistan uh, whenever the government or anybody wanted some a voice of calmness a voice of balance a voice of wisdom then they would turn to Sheikh Mufti Muhammad Rafi Uthmani and also his brother Mufti Taqi Uthmani um, so you know, in, he called for unity, he talked about unity, unity w without undermining your own, you know, views, but unity in terms of agreeing to disagree, where people can live together, understand one another, agree to disagree and work for the betterment of, of the country and, and the globe and uh, the, the whole Muslim world. 
So this this is um, Mufti Muhammad Rafi Uthmani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Today we have to say Rahimahullah Ta'ala, may Allah have mercy on him. Um, he, like I said, his loss is a loss for the whole entire Ummah. Uh, and, um, you know, his loss is not just a loss for Karachi, Pakistan or his family, but the whole Ummah. He's left thousands of thousands of students. He was also my teacher. Alhamdulillah, I got to meet him, got to spend time with him now and then. He's, vi he's visited many countries of the world. Like I said, he traveled to many countries, attended many conferences. Uh, he visited the UK many times. Uh, many times he's been to our city of Leicester, UK many times. Um, Alhamdulillah, he, in the last trip he made was 2019 i invited him he had food with us as well but then i met him after that in 2020 in pakistan and i've talked about you know when i met him and i had food at his house as well and uh, um, i talked about it in, in this book and then i went again in this year in ramadan may and but he was quite ill that time and i was able to only see him for five minutes to his house and you know uh, just see him but he recognized me then as well um, alhamdulillah so uh, you know he he has a lot of shafqa a lot of uh, you know like uh, uh, mercy and compassion towards his juniors and his students and he remembers everything he's very particular he will ask about everything um so uh, alhamdulillah got to uh, got to meet him and he 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 remembered me and also when we studied in pakistan you know one of my fatwas that i was able to write and show to him a few he actually told me himself that you know Show me some of your fatwas and I want to sign it for you. So I used to go to him and show him. I think I have about three, four. I think there's one which I took a, like a picture of and uh, this is the one that we'll put on, on the screen. But this is his sign, Muhammad Rafi Uthmani. Uh, and so, yeah, we remember him. The most we can do is pray for him, make uh, his salah thawab for him uh, and uh, pray for his family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his brother, uh, his brother and my beloved teacher, who I've spent more time with, Mufti Muhammad Taqi Uthmani, Hafizahullah. Uh, he's been very moved by this, of course. So, you know, really I am, you know, making dua for his brother as well, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him, you know, sabr and patience, and he doesn't get th that much affected, and his health is not affected, so that we can spend, we can have him for many, many years more in this world. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Dar al-Ulum Karachi as well. There's a massive loss there. I mean, he was the president and the head and, the, uh, you know, the principal of the whole institute. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, doesn't, you know, let Dar al-Ulum suffer in this regard, inshallah. And uh, it is able to progress further and further and more and more, inshallah ta'ala. And with these words, Jazakumullah khair for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.